Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to build this isometric room inside of Blender. We're going to model everything ourselves and afterwards we're also going to texture everything. So let's get started. First I will select the default cube and press S to scale it up. This cube will become the base of our room. After that I will reposition the camera so that the entire cube is in frame again. Make sure that the Z rotation of your camera is always set to 45 degrees. Then I will go into the camera settings and change the lens type from perspective to orthographic. Play around with the orthographic scale and the camera's location and rotation until you have a good view of the cube. Now select the cube and press tab to enter edit mode. Then select the move tool on the left side of your screen and select the vertex that is closest to the camera. By pressing X we can delete this vertex. And by doing this we have created a simple room shape. Now back in object mode let's add a solidify modifier to the room to make it a little bit thicker. Make sure to check even thickness. After that let's also add a bevel modifier to the room to round off the edges. Now I will start blocking out the scene. I know that I want to have a big window or door in this wall, so I will cut a hole in it using a boolean. First I will add in a new cube, and inside of the rooms modifiers panel I will add in a boolean modifier. The boolean object will be the new cube that we had just added. This means that wherever the two cubes intersect, they will create a hole. Currently we cannot see the hole that we're making because the cube is blocking our view. So let's change its viewport display to wire. After that I will add in a placeholder for where I want a bed to be placed. When working on these types of rooms I normally don't start with everything planned out. For the bigger objects I therefore place temporary placeholders in the scene so that I can focus more of my attention on working on smaller decorative objects. Outside of the room, behind the window door, I want to create a simple balcony. First I will create the railing by simply scaling and rotating a new cube on different axes. For the top part of the railing I will add in a new loop cut in edit mode, so that we can extrude a face from it and create this rounded corner. Now let's start decorating the room a little. First I will make a little cabinet that we can place against a wall. To do this let's add a new cube to our scene and scale it until it looks like a single plank. Then add in an array modifier to that cube's modifiers panel and increase the offset. Let's also duplicate it, rotate it 90 degrees and in the array modifier let's increase the count value to 3. To make the edges of the cabinet a little less sharp, we will add in a bevel modifier. But as you can see, the bevel modifier doesn't look quite right. This is because we just scaled our cube into a new shape. So to fix this, press Ctrl A and select Apply Scale. Now your bevel modifier should work properly. At this point in time, I wasn't yet sure on what I wanted to place inside of the cabinet, so I just quickly made some simple boxes and placed them inside of it. But I did know that I wanted to place some books on top of the cabinet and around the room. So I just quickly made one that we can just duplicate. The wall behind the cabinet is looking a little empty, so I will quickly create some simple picture frames. To do this, add in a cube, scale it so that it looks like a picture frame and then go into edit mode. In edit mode, select a face and insert it by pressing I and then extrude it inwards by pressing E. As you can see, we've now created a simple picture frame model. Every isometric room needs at least one plant, so let's create one and place it on top of our cabinet. The plant pot will be easy to make. Add in a cube and in edit mode delete the top face. Then give it a solidify modifier and subdivision surface modifier. After that, extrude the bottom face so that you get a nice curve at the bottom. 
For the leaves of the plant, I added in a new cube to our scene and gave it a subdivision surface modifier. Then, back in edit mode, I stretched the cube so that it got the rough shape of a single leaf. Since all the leaves of the plant will be the exact same, I duplicated them by pressing Alt D. This way we linked all of the leaves together. What this means is if I were to change the shape of the original leaf, all the shapes of the other leaves would also change. For this isometric room, I wanted to change the room shape a little bit instead of just having the standard room shape that everyone uses. So I moved one of the top vertices of the room a little bit. Now let's finally delete the placeholder of the bed and model a real one. First I modeled the simple shape of the support poles. I did this easily in edit mode by just extruding and scaling the top face. As always, let's make sure to give every new object a bevel modifier to round off the edges. To give the poles a little bit more detail, I will place a sphere on top of them and extrude the middle part of the sphere inside of edit mode. Of course, again, give the sphere a bevel modifier. For the back of the bed, I wanted to create a little bit of a curved shape. So once we have added a new cube to our scene, let's go into edit mode and add in a loop cut. Then let's drag the two vertices on top slightly up and press Ctrl B to bevel them. I'm also going to create a small hole inside of the back of the bed. For the boolean object, I won't be adding in another cube. I will just simply copy and paste the back of the bed and scale it down a little. The boolean process is just the same as how we made our window. For the rest of the bed I will simply just duplicate and slightly change the objects that we just modeled. Now let's also add a more interesting floor to our room. Let's add in a new cube, give it a bevel modifier and let's scale it into a plank shape. Once you've done that, let's give it an array modifier. By adjusting the count and relative offset of the array modifier, we can turn our single plank into a whole array of planks. If you would then add another array modifier on top of that, we can fill our entire room with the new floor planks. Instead of all of the floor planks being neatly aligned, I want them to have some additional offset from each other in each row. To prevent the floor planks from sticking out of the sides of the room, I will add a new boolean object around it. Let me show you what I mean. First, add in a new cube and change its viewport display to wire. Then, scale it so that it fits perfectly around our room shape. Now, let's delete the top and bottom face inside of edit mode. Then, back in object mode, let's give it a solidify modifier and change the thickness value so that the cube stretches far away into the outside. Now we can freely change the positioning of our floor tiles and once you're satisfied, we can set the outer cube that we just added to be the boolean object inside of the planks modifiers panel. This way, all of the planks that are outside of the room and inside of the boolean object, they will be deleted. Before we move on any further, let's quickly finish our bed. Currently the bed framing looks good, but we are of course missing the pillows and blanket. Making the pillows is very easy. First add in a cube and give it a cloth modifier. If we would now press the spacebar to play the world animation, we see that the cube starts to fall. This is because it's now acting like it's made out of cloth and gravity is affecting it. In a cloth modifier, make sure to turn on pressure and set the pressure amount to 5. If we would play the world animation now, you can see that the cube doesn't look like a pillow yet. So, to make it look like one, subdivide the cube a lot. The more subdivisions, the better. If you would press play after we have subdivided the cube, it already looks a lot better, but not quite right. So let's also scale the cube into a rough pillow shape. To make the pillow look even more realistic, I will place it above the bed and give the bed a collision modifier. If we would now press play, our cube will fall and collide with the bed and create a pillow shape. Feel free to play around with the cloth settings 
and keep in mind that you may need to give other objects the collision modifier also. Here you can see the precise cloth modifier values I used for my pillows. Let's also create a blanket. We're also going to use a cloth modifier to do this, but the process will be a lot different from the pillows. First, add in a plane and in edit mode, right click on it and subdivide it a couple of times. Then, with all of the vertices selected, press E and extrude them all a little bit up. After that, either select all the outside vertices manually or go to select and press select sharp edges. Once you have selected all of them, press S to scale and then press zero. Now, with all of the vertices still selected, press M and merge by distance. Finally, let's extrude two of the sides and delete their edges. Now you can add in array modifiers to create the blanket, but make sure that you have checked the merge checkbox. For the cloth modifier itself, make sure that you have again turned on pressure and increased the value to something like 15. Also make sure that under the shape drop down menu, you've turned on sewing and increased the max sewing amount. We're almost done with our scene. I'm always a little impatient with adding lining to my scene, so even though we're still going to be adding new objects, I already made a simple lighting setup. Firstly, I added a backdrop. For this, I added in a new plane to our scene, scaled it up and extruded two sides on a Z axis. Make sure to also bevel them a little bit. I did this so that from the camera's perspective, it will always look like there is an infinite background. For lighting, I always add in a big area light to my isometric room that shines from above. Besides that, I will also add a few different area lights into the scene that shine from different directions. For this scene, I also added in a strong area light behind the window so that it looks like sun is shining into our room. As a fun way to decorate the walls a little bit more, I added in some neon lights. To make them, I added in a bezier curve to my scene and in edit mode, I scaled and moved the vertices of the curves. To complete the look, select both end vertices and press F. For the planet light, I did the same thing, but I also added in a bezier circle. Then, in the material properties, I gave all the neon lights the same neon light material. In this material, make sure to change the principal BSDF to an emission node and change its color and value. This emission material will turn the Bezier curves into actual light emitting objects. Now we can finally start texturing our room. All the materials I will use in this isometric room will be simple materials where we just changed the base color, except for a few the wood materials. For the first wood material, I will download three wooden textures from the website Ambient CG. Back in Blender, let's add in a shader editor to our workspace. In the top left corner, click and drag in a new window and of course change it to a shader editor. You can close this again by right clicking on this border. Now inside the shader editor, let's click on create new material. Then select the principal BSDF and let's press Ctrl Shift T to add in our wood image textures. If you're not possible to do this, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and enable the Node Wrangler add-on. Anyways, let's select the color, roughness and normal textures and let's press Enter. These will now be added automatically to your material inside of the shader editor. As you can see, we've now created a wood material that we can use inside of our scene. I will be using it for the floor. Unfortunately, because we used an array modifier to make our floor, you can see that the material just repeats itself. To fix this, go into the array modifier settings and under UV, change the UV offset values of both array modifiers. For all the other wooden objects in the scene, I will create a second wood material with different wood textures. 
If the material looks stretched on some objects, you will need to go into edit mode, select the entire object and press U cube projection. This should already make it look a lot better. But if you even want more control, you can open up a UV editor window and change the texture placement for each individual face of the mesh inside of edit mode. For all the other materials in our scene, you can just change the simple values in the material properties itself, instead of opening up the more complex shader editor. Whenever I add in a screen to any of my scenes, I like to take a screenshot of my Blender project and place it on that set screen. This way, it looks like the person that lives inside of the isometric room is actually the one creating it inside of Blender on the computer screen. Anyways, to do this, first take a screenshot of your screen. With the screen selected, go to the material properties and give it an extra material. In a few moments, we will assign the screenshot that we just made to this material. But first, go into edit mode and select the face on which you want to show the screenshot. With that face selected, go back in the material properties and click on your screen material and press assign. What this basically does is it assigns the screen material to the specific face that we just selected. Okay, so now in the shader editor, select the principal PSDF again and press Ctrl T. Then select the screenshot that we just took. If your screenshot is not correctly rotated on the object, change the shader editor to a UV editor. Then in edit mode with the screen selected, go into the UV editor and you can now change the rotation and position of the UV. Also, if you're still seeing your booleans, Make sure to disable both their viewport and rendered views. I hope that this video was helpful to someone. If you have still any questions, feel free to let me know. And if you are going to make this room yourself, feel free to tag me on Instagram. Good luck with your renders, everyone. Bye.